what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? So, I know y'all looking at the title of this video, BYOB Crazy. It's not what you think. It's not bring your own beer. It's be your own bank. So, with um, the last couple of videos, I was telling y'all about different little concepts that we could use to let your life insurance work as um, like a beneficial, like a little, a little nest egg for you. All right, so uh, we're going to start off with some average American household numbers, and then we're going to get into some of these concepts. This video will be a little longer than the other ones because I'm really, I'm going to walk y'all through some stuff. So hopefully, you know, y'all can get some, some type of benefit out of it. So we're going to start with the American, the average American household. So you see the numbers. So with the numbers, I kind of added a, a dollar amount to it. So for every dollar that you get, you got three cents right here, which is the savings. You got 23 cent, which is left for your lifestyle. 40 cent right here is taxes. And I know a lot of y'all probably, man, taxes ain't that, taxes ain't that high, but you got to add all of the tax. You got to add your water tax, uh, your ground tax, um, like your tax you pay on your cell phone, so all your combined taxes um, is, is 40%. These are average numbers. You can Google them, um, Google them as well, but these are the average numbers. Um, and then the interest left that you're paying on all of these things is 34%, which is 34 cents. So the thing that I want to get, the thing that I want to show y'all how to do is to kind, kind of make these numbers work for you as opposed to work against you. So we're going to go to the your family bank approach as opposed to the average household approach. So the your family bank approach is, um, you see the big difference that you saving 3% three, three or 3 cent on every dollar, you saving 15% or 15 cent on every dollar. Um, your lifestyle goes up to 33%, so it goes up a whole nother 10%. Um, the taxes get cut by 10%, so the taxes now is 30%. And then the interest you're paying on all of your houses, all of the stuff, you know, like house, cell phone, and all that stuff, that's that's cut in half too. So now you got 15 cent on every dollar you're saving. Um, you got 33% on every dollar for your lifestyle, every dollar that you make. Then you got right here 30% on the taxes and then 22% on the interest and stuff like that. So um, the next thing I want to talk about, like I have five questions for you, five questions. So with these five questions, um, what if I could teach you how to reduce the value of interest you are paying to lenders, get out of debt in nine years or less, including your mortgage and student loans? improve your cash flow so you got more money coming in, decrease taxes, save for college, and also retire with tax favored income. So um, what I'm going to start off with, I'm going to start off with a little case and the case is just going to, it's just some numbers that I put together. So the case is going to start off and I'm going to show you. We go. We go. Have Mark and Joyce. This is a married couple. Mark is thirty-seven years old. Joyce is thirty-five years old. Um, they have three kids. So they got three kids. And their ages are four, six, and eight. They have a Bank of America bank account, and they got a 401k with their job. So with the Bank of America, the Bank of America account, they got $6,000 saved. So the Bank of America is six thousand for the four hundred one k that they have with their job. That's thirty six thousand five hundred dollars that they got in that account. Also, 
Bach and Joyce have no college savings for the kids. Their desired retirement age is 65 years old. And on a monthly basis, Mark and Joyce bring in 3960 $3,960 a month. And now, I got some notes for y'all. So let me get my notes and I'm going to put that up here and we're going to go over some more numbers. Sometimes this don't act right, so I got to hold it. Y'all don't laugh at me because I'm holding it. Um, this is the rest of their outstanding debts. So they have credit card debt, medical debt, another credit card debt, furniture, auto, mortgage. Um, these are their interest rates. These are their balances. And these are the payments that they make a month. So hopefully you can see the numbers if you zoom in. Um, I'm not gonna go over all those numbers. I'm just gonna get to the bottom line. This is the, the main part that I wanna go over. So their total debt, their average interest rate is 10% for all of the interest that they got with everything that they have. Their total debt is $180,198 and they pay $2,177 monthly. So when you add the interest up for these numbers, that adds another additional $199,959. So most people, when they see, like they might say, oh, my house is $153,000, um, but they're not, they not taking into consideration the interest that's added on to it. So when you add the interest and all that stuff, that they thought their total debt was $180,198, but they added another $199,000, which brought their total debt to $380,157. So, um, you ask, if they go with this with this plan, without the, your family bank concept or the, your family bank plan, this is going to take them about 30 years to pay off all of this debt. Um, our whole concept is to make you pay it off, so not make you, but to encourage you or teach you how to pay it off sooner so that you can put more money away for your retirement or college or kids or whatever the case may be. So I got another another piece of notes that I got for y'all too. So hold on, let me look at those. So again, on average, on average, and if, if you really pay attention to certain things, like if you go to McDonald's or you go to Walmart or something like that. On average, your whole lifetime, by every job you had from when you started, when you was younger, you make $2 million accumulated income your whole life. But when you retire, you only retire with $60,000 and that's not really you know, too much, that's not enough, especially if you got all that other interest and all the other stuff. That's why you might see so many people being greeters at Walmart or McDonald's or such stuff like that. So what our concept is to use the bank concept. So with the bank concept, what they do is for every dollar that you put into your bank account, the bank makes seven dollars off of it so they, they send it out so you put a dollar in the bank the bank only give you one percent interest but the bank gives other people loans and stuff like that it charges them oh 24 percent loan 24 percent interest on the loan 18 percent and stuff like that so i got another piece of notes for y'all I, I got a lot of notes for y'all but not a lot i got two more pieces of notes for y'all so let me get those notes to show y'all how we can help Get rid of that stuff. This orange, don't judge me because the rest of it was blue. So, with the current rate, like I said, it's going to be 30 years. And then, all together with this, with that. 401k, 
Um, if you do that for 30 years, it's going to equal $408,890. That's before taxes. So after taxes, it's going to be this $306,668. So what your family bank, what their concept is, using, using their concept, you're going to be out of this in 7.8 years instead of, th instead of the 30 years. You saved $122,739 in interest because it cut, it cut it down. It cut the interest out by doing it this way. You freed up $2,177 a month for retirement. Savings in 30 years is $1,004,387. The cost not to do this is $820,000. $820,458. So um, what I want to do now, I want to show you my last piece of notes and then we'll just talk after that. So when I say, when I say that, I'm gonna erase this too, hopefully y'all got all this. So, when I say how much does it, does it cost them not to do this plan, this is what I mean. So as you saw, it was 306,000 $668 if you do it the traditional way. But with your family bank, you have that $1,004,387. So this number comes after the 401k takes their taxes. So you subtract that, you subtract the your family bank way with the traditional way, and you get $697,719. So then remember the $122,000 you saved in interest, you add that to this. So it's $122,739 in interest you saved. So to not do it, it costs you just $820,458. Um, so with, with, with that being said, right, now we, we just gonna talk a little bit. We gonna talk. So it's gonna be some people even when even with me showing the numbers and showing how this program works, it's still going to be some people that like, man, I still don't know how that works, man. I, I ain't doing that. I ain't messing with that. And that's cool because, you know, I understand it. When you get to, sometimes you're so stuck in your way. You're so stuck in your way that when you see something new, you don't want to do it because you're so used to, like, your way. So if you don't know, you know you don't know. Also, I think that the only way you can grow is when you get out your comfort zone. So, if you're comfortable or you complacent with where you at, you're going to stay where you at. And I feel like, you know, once you become whether a parent or an adult, you're supposed to make, let the next generation have it a little easier than you did. So, with that being said, if this could help, you know, with your kids, your grandkids, or something set up a future for them, like, won't you... Won't you want to start that and, and help them? Like I would, and that's why, you know, that's why I do it. I try to educate people as I go along. Now you go, like I said, you still gonna have some people to say, man, I ain't trying that. That that don't work. That's just not for me. But you gonna let you gonna let your 401k and all the hard-earned money that you made like get taxed and interest and all that stuff like that. Now, sometimes when you do when you do change your comfort zone, and this just me just just talking, being real, but it's my opinions. When you change your comfort zone, you're gonna lose people who you thought were friends or whoever, man, because you just you know you change you sometimes you outgrow people, and that's not a bad thing. It's just um, it's just life. It's just life happening. So when you do certain stuff, just be ready for you know like just ready to be. Like who you are, man, and, and and what you are. So you can't be afraid of nothing like that, especially if you want to make stuff better. I think that you know you should leave something. Everybody should leave something for the next generation to help them, so they don't struggle how the previous generation did. So if you can do something like this to help them, I think that you know you should do it. Um, what's another thing? Another thing is, I felt like I felt like you know when. A lot of people chase money, you know, chase money. 
that that puts them in a, a messed up spot. If you chase the mission, and the mission to be, oh, I want the next generation to be better, or I want them to be better. If you don't make it about yourself, you'll be able to do it. I feel like when you make it about yourself, that's all ego. So that's all selfishness, man. And if you operate it, if you operate in ego, nothing good can really come you from do certain things. Just be prepared, not scared. <laughs> but be prepared, not scared for what the outcome is going to be. So, so many people, so many people lack accountability and like holding themselves accountable. So they'll make excuses for why they didn't make it or why they weren't successful. So many people, oh, I need stability or I need, I need uh, comfortability. I need, I need security. But the same thing they're asking for, they're not willing to give. And that's ego right there too, because that's selfish. But when you, when you look at it, like I say, when you chase when you chase the mission and not the money, that makes it bigger than you. So even when you do feel like giving up or you do feel like quitting, you gotta look at the mission. Like, oh no, I man, I can't I can't have my son kids messed up. I can't have my son kids kids messed up. Um, it's just you know so many people function in their dysfunction and they don't hold themselves accountable. So many people don't they don't they don't even they don't self-evaluate themselves, but they, it's easy for them to look at everybody else's situation and be like, oh yeah, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want to do that, but they won't stop with themselves. And then when you don't stop with yourself, you know what history is. And insanity, if you don't know history, it's going to repeat itself. Insanity is just doing the same thing over and over again and wishing for a different result. So you got you to gotta work on yourself first. And then you just gotta be brutally honest with yourself for whatever it is, whether it's your strengths or your weaknesses, work on that because whatever, as you work on yourself, you're gonna get better. And then when, I focus a lot on finances because I feel like finances for one, um, finances for one could like eliminate a lot of illnesses. So like, you know, heart attacks and strokes. Most people, a lot of people, it's a big percentage of people that die from heart attacks and strokes, whether they stressed out about something um, or anything like that. Most of the time, it's finances. Uh, when you people get divorced, most of the time, it's finances. So if you can check your finances and then you can be adult enough to hold yourself accountable for certain stuff, man, do that, man, because it, it'll make a whole, a whole world of difference. So I'm sorry for getting off subject a little bit, but I just had to get that out there. Um, I just had to put that out there because it was, it was on my heart. Somebody probably needed to hear that. Um, don't shoot the messenger, man. So uh, again, y'all going to see me again next Wednesday. I'm going to keep this thing going. Every Wednesday, I'm going to post something. If you need to set up an appointment or anything like that, let me go to the website, www.bepreparednotscared.net www.bepreparednotscared.net uh, Leave a comment if you like it or if you share it, just, you know, just let people know. And if you hear something more here that you just want to know more about, set up a, a consultation. I do complimentary, compl complimentary consultations, 30 minutes. So that means come in, talk to me. I might put you on with something you don't know. Um, and we can just bounce ideas off each other. But it's a lot of stuff out here that we can do that can put you in a better position than you are. So I hope you learned something. WWW, be prepared, not scared. Thank you, man. Y'all have a blessed day.